I want to talk to you today about some of the ridiculous Bible perversions of the New Age. All right. Before we get started, though, I always like to begin reading some scripture, and a very important verse is Proverbs chapter 18, verse 13. We read, He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. I want you to remember that as we are going through this video. Whatever camp you're from, if your new versions are okay, and Nestle's text and whatever, or your King James only, whatever you are, whatever your system of belief, do not answer this video before you see it, okay? Because if you do, it's folly and shame to you. But what does the Bible say about adding to or subtracting from the Word of God? Well, we're going to look at a couple of verses quickly here. First, we're going to turn to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6, which says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in Him. Add thou not unto His words, lest He reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. So right away you see God says, do not add to this book. Do not add to the word of God uh, because if you do, it, it will prove that you're a liar. Okay. Next we're going to look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter uh, 4 verse 2. It says, Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Again, don't add to the word of God. Now we're going to turn back to the very last chapter in the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. Probably the strongest uh, verse in the entire Bible condemning scripture perversion. Revelation chapter 22 Verse 18 through 19 says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So you see a very serious warning there. If you add to the book, God will add to you the plagues. If you take away from the words of the prophecy of this book, God will take away your part out of the book of life. And to show you how serious that is, look over at Revelation chapter 20, verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That should make you think. Don't tamper with God's word. Now we're going to turn over to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16. And we'll see the motive. Why do people change the word of God? As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. That's the reason people pervert the Word of God, because they're unlearned and unstable. You say, well, yeah, but I, I know a professor, and he's got five earned degrees and everything. doesn't matter. If you rest the Scriptures, which means to change it, to twist it, if you rest the Scriptures, God says you are unstable and unlearned. Okay? Uh, and then finally, Jeremiah chapter 23. We'll look back here quickly. Jeremiah 23, verse 36, says, And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden, for ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. That's what these new versions are. They are perversions, okay? Taking words out, adding words, twisting the meaning. And I'm going to show you some of the worst examples of this perversion in this video. Okay, but first, I want to talk to you about something that a lot of Christians have been deceived on. A lot of times you will hear a preacher, you'll hear this on the radio a lot, uh, you'll hear this from professors and things, and they will say, the King James Version, 
or some other version is not accurate to the Greek text. And I said the because the is the definitive article there. That can only be referring to one. When you have the in front of a singular word, you are only talking about one. Okay? That's deception. Let me show you why. I have here a Textus Receptus. I have here a Nestle's text. They're not the same. Two different Greek texts. This one, when you research this subject, is based on 5,210 manuscripts, and most of those manuscripts are from Antioch, or can be traced back to Antioch. This one is based on 45 manuscripts. I didn't say 4,500, I said 45. Less than 1% of the extant Greek manuscripts that we have today. And this one, those manuscripts come from Alexandria, Egypt. Now, look it up on a map sometime. Alexandria, Egypt, and Antioch are not the same place. They're quite a distance apart. And if you know your Bible, Acts chapter 11, verse 26 says, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. That's important to note. So when you hear a preacher say, the Greek text, this King James Bible is not accurate to the Greek text, just say which one. You see, it is accurate to this Greek text, but no, it's not accurate to this Greek text. This Greek text is based on corrupt manuscripts that are owned by the Vatican. Okay? And, it, and you can even look it up. It's in my other video, so I'm not going to show it here. But right here, it says about in the introduction that it was made under the supervision of the Vatican. And the two biggest manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, which underlie this Nestle's text, are in the care of Rome. Is that where you want to go to get your Bible? And by the way, not only do Roman Catholics use the Nestle's text, but I have here in addition, this is from the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is a Nestle's 25th. This is a Nestle's 27th. The Jehovah's Witnesses use this text for their New World Translation. And every Bible produced since 1881, I'll show you that in a minute, every Bible, every new version, other than the King James Version right here, every new version, NIV, New American Standard, New King James Version, they're all based on the Nestle's text. They're not based on the Textus Receptus. Okay? The New King James Version will combine the two. They'll have some Nestle's readings. They'll have some Receptus readings. Uh, very deceptive. And there's something else that they don't tell you. This side does not tell you. They want you to believe that this is new information that they didn't have in 1611. Not true. I have here a Dewey Reams version. This is a Catholic Bible. This is an older one. And just about 100 years old, actually, this book. But this one came out in 1610. The King James Version came out in 1611. This one is based on the Alexandrian manuscripts. Of course, the Nestle's text wasn't available in 16, or wasn't, it wasn't called the Nestle's text in 1610. But the point is the Roman Catholic Church brought out their Bible based on the Alexandrian manuscripts before the King James Version was even available to the people. So you'll see a lot of these readings that are updated and, and new and they didn't have it in 1611. It's a lie. They had it, but it was in the care of Rome. Okay, And you can get an NIV and you can look it up. All these newer, better readings, they were available in 1610 with this Bible, the Dewey Reams Bible. But the first one the first of these, what you know, this was always over here, this was always the side of Roman Catholicism. Rome always used the Nestles, the, well, not the Nestles, they always used the Alexandrian manuscripts. And people knew that. But what the devil did is he eventually came out with a quote unquote Protestant that was, uh, Bible, which, which was actually supposed to be a revision of the King James Version. But what they did is, they snuck in the Alexandrian manuscripts and they came out with this one. This is an original revised version, 1881, the New Testament. I think the whole Bible came out in 1884, if I remember correctly, Old and New Testament. 
but this is an original. The two guys that worked on that introducing the Alexandrian text to the revision committee were Westcott and Hort. I hear a lot about those if you study this subject. But this is the one that came out. This was the first new version to get rid of the King James Bible. And after that, this one came out in England. After that, there came this one. Let's see if I can hold it right here. The American Standard Version, 1901. This one I think is a second edition, but the point is, this is an American Standard Version of 1901. The first new version from the Alexandrian manuscripts on the American shore, which was supposed to be a Protestant Bible. And it wasn't Protestant, it's Roman Catholic. But I want to show you quickly some of these new versions, the earlier ones, okay? Okay, here I have the <clears throat> Dewey Reams Bible. You can see right there, uh, promoted by Pope Pius XII, the man who signed a concordant with Adolf Hitler and Mussolini and Franco in Spain. So there's your Dewey Reams. Here you have the revised version, 1881. And here is my American Standard Version. It's kind of hard to read these. They're pretty old. I don't know if, you know if that's going to show up. You just barely make it out. Okay. But I just want to show you a deceptive one here. This is a Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament. The Revised Standard Version is based on the Nestle's text. Okay? So they'll deceive you. They want you to think that this Catholic Bible here, and, you, and by the way, you'll actually see Revised Standard Versions and New Revised Standard Versions that, are, that have Catholic editions. And if you look up on the internet and, you, and uh, you know, go to a Roman Catholic website and ask what Bible versions they recommend, they will recommend the Revised Standard Version or the New Revised Standard Version. So it's a Catholic Bible. And the Confraternity, of course, is a newer edition of the Dewey Reams. But you see the deception. Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament. No, it's Roman Catholic Roman Catholic New Testament. If they wanted a Protestant Roman Catholic New Testament, it should be King James Version and the Confraternity. But that's how they'll deceive you. But all of these new versions that have come out uh, line up with a lot of the readings in the uh, the Nestle's text and, and they all have these same places where they will attack uh, specific verses. This is an excellent track here by Terry Watkins and um, zoom in here a little bit. I want you to be able to see these verses and you can look these up in all these new versions. They will pervert them. Genesis 22 Verse 8, Isaiah 14, verse 12, Matthew 20, 20, Matthew 26, 28, Mark 3, 29, Luke 4, 4. Okay, Luke 4, 8, Luke 16, 23, John 4, 24, John 14, 16, Acts 2, 47, Acts 4, 27, Acts 8, 37, usually is taken out um, of the Bibles, these new Bible versions, these Alexandrian ones. There's Here are the other verses which they will take out or put in uh, parentheses to make you think that they're not part of the, they shouldn't be part of the Bible. Acts chapter 17 verse 29, Acts 20 verse 22, Romans 6 22, 1 Corinthians 1 21, 1 Corinthians 6 9, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 17, 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5, Colossians 1 14, 1 Timothy 3 16, 1 Timothy 6 10, 2 Timothy 2 15, Revelation 1 5. Okay. Here's the website address. Sorry, I had to go through this track very quickly, but for sake of time, I couldn't show everything in great detail. av1611.org. You can get on there, get all this information, and you can learn how to spot a counterfeit Bible. Okay? They're all the same. Doesn't matter. All these new versions, they just keep coming out and trying to get their corrupted verses passed. But I want to show you some of the mentality 
of a lot of these new versions. This is the J.B. Phillips translation, and you can see that design on the cover of this thing. It's a P and an X. See it there? That is a symbol for Christ, according to Rome, basically. Um, but you can see, as in this picture here, a Catholic priest with the symbol on his uh, robes. Basically, what they're trying to say is they are Christ. They are another Christ. And that is a teaching, an official teaching of Roman Catholicism, that the priest is a, another Christ, as you see here. Pretty blasphemous. But uh, I want to show you here in the back some of the writings of this guy, J.B. Phillips. Here he writes that uh, he felt bound to conclude from the sense of the next three verses that we have here either a slip of the pen on the part of Paul <laughs> or, mo or more probably a copyist error. See, that's not written by somebody who has reverence for the Word of God. That's written by a Bible perverter, a Bible corrector. He comes across something that he doesn't like and he says, well, obviously Paul probably made a mistake here or, you know, somebody copied it wrong. See, that's, that's the mentality of these people that come out with these new versions. But now, next, we're going to listen to something very, very interesting. This is a CD set from Radio Liberty. Excuse me. And we have here, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan attended a medical meeting on March 20th, 1969. Let me zoom into that a little bit. The speaker was Dr. Richard Day, who told the audience to turn off their recorders and not take notes because he was going to tell them what was going to happen. Some of you were talking about communism. Well, what I'm talking about is much bigger than communism. Dr. Dunnigan re realized the message was important, so he tried to remember what was said and made notes later. This is one of the most important CD sets ever recorded. Now this is a very, very interesting uh, set of recordings made by this man. There, there is a group of very rich, very powerful men which are designing the Antichrist One World Kingdom, the One World Government, the One World Religion. And this man, Dr. Richard Day, who later became, <coughs> excuse me, became the head of Planned Parenthood, he told this group of medical doctors what they were doing to bring about this new order. Okay, so let's listen to this. Another area of discussion was religion. Uh, this is a, an avowed atheist speaking. Uh, and he said, religion is not necessarily bad. A lot of people seem to need religion with its mysteries and rituals, so they will have religion. But the major re religions of today have to be changed because they are not compatible with the changes to come. The old religions will have to go, especially Christianity. And a new religion can be accepted for use all over the world. It will incorporate something from all of the old ones to make it more easy for people to accept it and feel at home in it. Most people won't be too concerned with religion. They will realize that they don't need it. In order to do this, the Bible will be changed. It will be rewritten to fit the new religion. Gradually, key words will be replaced with, with new words having various shades of meaning. Then the meaning attached to the new word uh, can be close to the old word. And as time goes on, other shades of meaning of that word can be emphasized and then gradually that word replaced with another word. Um, I don't know if I'm making that clear, but the idea is that uh, everything in Scripture need not be rewritten, just key words replaced by other words, and uh, the variability in meaning attached to any word can be uh, used as a uh, tool to change the entire meaning of Scripture and therefore make it acceptable to this uh, new religion. Most people won't know the difference, and this is another one of the times where he said, the few who do notice the difference won't be enough to matter. Then followed one of the most surprising statements of the whole presentation. He said, some of you probably think the churches won't stand for this. 
And he went on to say, the churches will help us. There was no elaboration on this. Uh, it was unclear just uh, what he had in mind when he said the churches will help us. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? How would a man hear this back in 1969? You know, why are they talking about replacing the Bible? And by changing the language of the Bible. And then yet that's the very philosophy that you'll hear from most pulpits. Well, we can't understand the King James Version anymore. The words are archaic. The words need to be changed and updated. Interesting. But uh, there's a book which has been written, uh, probably one of the finest books out there on this subject of this conspiracy of the New Agers to pervert the words of the, of the King James Bible. It's this Bible right here, uh, New Age Bible Versions by Gail Ripplinger. This is one of the finest books ever printed on the subject of the Bible version issue. I've read a lot of critiques of this book, a lot of people attack it, and it's interesting because many of them that attack it, many of the people I've personally talked to that attack Gail Ripplinger's book, they've never even read it. And the reason for that is because this thing is almost 700 pages long with the notes in the back, almost 700 pages of documentation. And they'll pick a little thing here, they'll pick a little quote, and they'll, she misspelled somebody's name or something, and they'll never cover the whole issue. They can't. They cannot refute this book. Okay? Very good book. I highly recommend it. We give them out here to people at King James Video Ministries. We meet them when we're out door to door. Give them these books. Excellent book. Okay? And you can get it at her website, uh, avpublications.com, I think it is. Okay, here again is a close up of Gail Ripplinger's book. Like I said, one of the best ever written on the subject of, these, of this New Age conspiracy, if you will to destroy the words of God. This Bible I found at a used bookstore, uh, very, very interesting inside the uh, front cover of this. This is a Roman Catholic, a St. Joseph edition. Uh, you can see here in the back, you can see the uh, priest, the bishop, and the pope. This is definitely a Roman Catholic uh, perversion. Mary, the mother of God, and here you have Jesus Christ with his uh, heart thing there, uh, which, again, I don't have time to get into that right now, but, uh, but something very interesting in the inside cover of this. How about that? Now, if you know anything at all about the occult, you know what that symbol is. Some call it the Eye of Horus. Uh, it's basically an all-seeing eye, and this thing is calling it Lord. Very interesting. That's not my Lord. Um, and some people say, well, that's symbolizing God. No, the Bible teaches that the eyes, plural, of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. But what about this single eye thing? Well, something very, very interesting has come out in these last few years here. Uh, I'm going to look up Zechariah chapter 11, verse 17 very quickly and read that. Zechariah 11, verse 17 says, Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm, and upon his right eye his arm shall be clean dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. Now you read back in the book of Revelation, and you will see that the Antichrist is wounded in the head. And isn't it interesting that the Passion movie came out and the man who played Christ in there, the man who depicted Jesus Christ, had his right eye, wasn't his left eye, his right eye was swollen shut. His right eye was darkened, as the Bible says. And you can see it right here. Now, is that a coincidence? I don't think so. They're preparing the world to receive the Antichrist. And by the way, the Passion movie is... Uh, just Roman Catholic, it's the 14 Stations of the Cross. 
Okay. Next. Next up, we have the New King James Version. Uh, you'll see this symbol associated with the New King James Version. And again, what is the symbol? Well, if you pick up a Witch's Book of Shadows, which is a spell book, you will see that same symbol, the three-pointed star. It's three sixes interwoven, uh, you know, six, six, six. And it's also on the cover of the Aquarian Conspiracy, and it's all over the occult. Uh, I've even, I was even at a occult festival at one time. I, I didn't know what it was, and I went in, and I saw that symbol all over the place. It is a symbol of the pagan trinity. Okay, but let me show you something interesting. Here's one of the books that is used to attack the King James Bible. This guy here, James White, uh, is a defender of the Alexandrian text and the new versions. And interestingly, you turn here a couple pages in, and lo and behold, look what we have. There you have your three-pointed star. And Latin, the official language of the Catholic Church. And some people say, well, James White, you know, he's, he's just trying to symbolize the Godhead, the, the Trinity. Here you have another book. He has a thing for this symbol, the three interwoven circles there. That's what he's trying to symbolize. And people say, well, that's, see, the forgotten Trinity. It's the Godhead. No, it isn't. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, you read that you're not to make a graven image. Of the God of the Godhead okay so whatever he's doing here using occult symbols uh, it's just kind of weird but if you go out and get this book uh, to try and refute the King James only position then you really ought to get this book to refute James White you ought to read them both okay uh, because James White attacks Peter Ruckman in here, so Peter Ruckman attacks back. <laughs> and uh, I think Dr. Ruckman shows over 70 places where James White just comes right out and lies. But uh, since James White came out with this one, he just now came out with a new edition. This is the newest one. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. I've just kind of looked through it. But I want to show you the kind of quote-unquote scholarship that James White practices. Here we have page 27, King James Version as New Revelation. The, he separates King James Bible believers into, into five groups. And over here on the next page, he says, as a result, these folks go so far as to say that the Greek and Hebrew texts should be changed to fit the readings found in the King James Version. Now, if you look beside there, there's a little number six. See, now when you do that, you footnote and you prove, okay, this was written by, this assertion here was made by a King James Bible believer, and it was page so-and-so. That's how you footnote something. But you go down here to the footnote, and you have James White make it even more radical, and he gives no documentation, none. These are his own thoughts, his own words. So he tells you something wild here, and then you go down here and he tells you something even wilder with no documentation given, no proof. That's the kind of scholarship you get from a man like James White. Okay? Incredible. I'm going to cover that book in another video. Uh, but next, let's look at another one. Here's a rather interesting one I found. Order of the Eastern Star the women's branch of the Masonic Lodge, one of the branches. Uh, but here's a, a gift Bible, and you have an inverted pentagram, which is a symbol of Baphomet, the goat of Mendes, or whatever. It's an occult symbol, Order of the Eastern Star is what that means. And, of course, down here, if you know anything at all about witchcraft, you know that they have their earth and fire and water and, you know, all of that. The five different colors there, you have blue, yellow, white, green, red. Uh, so this is, you know, an occult 
symbol on a Bible. And also, by the way, forgot to mention, if you look at the cover of a Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey, you will see that same symbol, an inverted pentagram. And uh, interesting to note that the Satanic Bible of Anton LaVey and the NIV are both printed and owned by HarperCollins Publishing. So you buy an NIV, your money goes to the same people that print the Satanic Bible. Okay, but another way for this thing to be shown is this way. Okay, just a normal standard pentagram. You'll see those also on witches' books, books by witches. And I found this to be rather interesting. A New Testament, uh, New American Standard Version, and you got a pentagram on there. Hmm, very interesting. Okay, next I want to show you some of these really ridiculous New Bible perversions. Uh, you see back in the old days, back in the early 1900s and on up through probably till the 1950s, 1960s, 70s, the big debate was here over these two texts, the Receptus, the Nestles, Alexandrian, Antiochian. That was the big debate. But now, now that the people, now that Christianity has accepted this text, with the perversions involved, the Roman Catholic Bibles, now they're starting to depart from this. And there are translations that are coming out all the time that don't even line up with the Nestle's text anymore. And I'm going to show you a whole pile of these new versions. You aren't going to believe what's in some of these Bibles. Let me show you. Okay, the first one we're going to look at here is this one, uh, the good news for a modern man, more like bad news for a modern man. And we'll look at the words of Peter, the Apostle Peter in the book of Acts. Peter answered him, may you and your money go, there you go. So you have Peter using profanity in the Bible, cussing a guy out. Real nice, real classy. And we have this thing, this perverted thing, the uh, hippie Bible, the living Bible. This thing came out, I guess, in the 1970s. Kenneth Taylor, I think, was the guy's name. But look at this thing. This is unbelievable. How about that? You want your kids reading that? Isn't that something? Look at one in the New Testament. How about that one? You think the Lord inspired that? Now here's one of the more perverted ones that came out. This one was put out by, uh, uh, let me, I'll have to zoom in here a little bit. The Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I uh, need to study that guy sometime. He's something else too. But here we have the Lord's Prayer. And again, our Father in Heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. Comes right out of black magic Satanism. That statement, as above, so below. That's straight out of the occult. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe in our, from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And this is a Bible. And this thing is very, very popular, by the way, among modern apostate, quote-unquote, Christians. Uh, Rick Warren quotes from this thing a lot. All right? Another false prophet. I mean, this horrible. And again, no manuscript evidence at all behind that thing. They just make it say whatever they want. Here we have the Today's New International Version. This is a feminist Bible. They take words like man out over 1,700 something times. I can't remember the exact number. I did a collation of this, the NIV and the King James Version. And uh, 
I documented 5,000 places where words like Jesus or God or man or father were taken out or perverted. I mean, it's, it's incredible. This is available at our website and uh, the video where I cover this, uh, the new versions more in detail, the NIV and the TNIV from NIV to KJV talking about why I gave up the NIV. These are both available at KingJamesVideoMinistries.com. Okay, the next one I want to show you is the Picture Bible. Well, what would be the, uh, another good way to get rid of the words of God? By giving teenagers pictures. So you make the whole quote-unquote Bible a comic book. That way they don't hide the words of God in their heart. So when they go to answer somebody, they don't have the words of God, they just have images in their mind. Images which are replaced very easily by TV and movies. Again, another corrupt new Bible perversion. Now this one here is kind of a weird one. Child story Bible. Looks like a guy sitting there. But then if you come back, looks like a woman's face. <laughs> kind of weird. I just thought that was a weird picture. But I do want to warn about these child story Bibles. Here you have another one, the Early Readers Bible. And they'll tell stories in there. And they here's a, a story about Noah. And it says, There was water all over all the world, but Noah and his family did not get hurt. God told Noah to make a big boat. He told Noah to take his family on the big boat. He told, to, told Noah to take many animals too. God was truly taking care of them all. And then the flood's over and yay, everything's okay. Uh, you're lying to a child when you read them this. There wasn't some kind of a bad natural disaster. God destroyed the earth because of man's wickedness. And Jesus said in Matthew 24 that it's going to be like the days of Noah before he comes back. We're headed right back to the days like it was before the flood. And you can see that if you know what's going on in society. Why would you lie to your kids? Why would you cover up Bible truth? You want to see the best uh, child story Bible that I've ever found? Right there. Read to your children from the King James Version. You know, let them make their own mental pictures. That's healthier for your brain anyhow. Okay. Now this one here. Oh, okay, there we go, focused. This one here is another one that I am very much against. This is a King James Version. Um, they will oftentimes make an edition of the King James Version and pervert it with something, with some other reason. This is a Children of Collar edition. Now let me show you this thing. What they do in this, Jesus becomes a black man. Here you have Joseph and Mary and the little black baby Jesus. And it goes on through, and, and time and time again, you have a black Jesus Christ. And why they do that is because this is a racist Bible. They cannot accept the fact that Jesus Christ was Jewish. Jesus Christ was not a black man. Jesus Christ was not a white man. The Roman Catholics will depict him like this, blonde-haired and blue-eyed, and, and oh, so fair-skinned and kind of effeminate, that's not Jesus Christ. Jesus was a carpenter and he was a Jew. He was not black. He was not white. Okay? He was a Jew. Stop covering up his race. And then we have this little ridiculous thing here. Uh, another one. This I don't think made it very far. Uh, it's just one of the most ridiculous things you'd ever want to read. The distilled Bible. Look at one here. This is supposed to be 2 Timothy. They don't give you verse numbers so you can't compare it. It says, they are trash cans and you are a golden goblet. Don't mix company. <laughs> and there's a lot of things in here. It's Again, I'm not going to cover the whole thing. I'll, I'll probably uh, make some videos talking about each of these on my website. But uh, just incredible. Again, another attempt to get rid of the King James Version. 
but one of the most blasphemous that I've ever found is this thing here made by a guy named Rob Lacey. Um, this thing's just incredible. I, I just, I've, I haven't read the whole thing because I don't think I could make it through without throwing it in the fire. I mean, it's, it's just so corrupt, so perverted. This is worse than the message. It's worse than the distilled Bible. He writes the Bible to whatever he feels like saying, and he admits it. Here's what he says. Remember the warnings in Revelation chapter 22. Here's what he says. Call it nerve, call it passion to connect, call it poetic license, whatever. The main question is, do the words get in the way of the story? If so, either change them or insist everyone goes to evening class on religious speak. Imagine writing something like that and claiming to be a Christian. And uh, by the way, Rob Lacey died a few years ago, 2006 is when he died, so he knows better now. But let's look over here at something else which I thought was very frightening that he would write this. The Jesus Liberation Movement, the church, what Jesus started, like it or loathe it, it's God's chosen community of expressing slash representing himself. Don't ask me why. Now, the Jesus Liberation Movement, the real one, uh, is actually a terrorist organization in Africa, and it's here in America as well. And this is a DVD about this man here, Charles Van Wyck, was a missionary in South Africa, and this guy uh, came in, he's a member of the Liberation Theology, the Liberation Movement, and he came in and attacked Charles Van Wyck's church and ended up killing a lot of people. Charles Van Wyck actually shot back at the man and injured him. And this guy went to jail for a little while, not for very long. And Charles Van Wyck actually had a chance to witness to the man. Phenomenal story, very, very interesting about why Christians should carry pistols and guns for defense. Um, he's not a pacifist. He's a uh, good man. But anyhow, black liberation theology. You'll see, if you study this thing, you'll see they have, they're into this black Christ thing. Jesus is not dying on the cross for sins. He's dying as a rebel, as a renegade, as you see here. He's a black Christ, and he hangs on the cross with bandoliers of bullets around him, and he's into killing white people. Why would, why would Rob Lacey use the, those terms? the Jesus Liberation Movement. Pretty ridiculous. Okay, now I want to talk about the newest of the perversions, uh, Bible magazines. I want to show you some of this stuff in a little bit more detail. Let's take a look. Okay, here we have the first one. This is for children. You know, lures them in with that nice shiny wording there. And I'm going to cover these in more detail on our website uh, for sake of time. But look down here. Going global. Remember, they're trying to build a new world order, a new global order where all governments, all countries come together, all religions. You'll see them using those terms. Global this, global that. Okay. But if you're not interested in that, if you're not a, a child, this is a, by the way, a uh, international children Bible. I guess that's supposed to be the version. And it's made by Thomas Nelson, which is also, they publish a lot of Catholic books. But if, you aren't, if you're not into that, then you can go with this one, Revolve 2009 for Young Women. And it's all how to conform to the world, what, what guys want, you know, and and everything, how to look like the world, and act like the world, and talk like the world, and it's all it is. It's worldly. Okay, that's a new century version. And then you have this one here, the uh, Divine Health, New King James Version. And this thing, you'll see this in these Bible zines a lot. There's this weird, ah, come on, 
can't get the page here. There's this weird preoccupation with sex. Okay, man's need for sex. And you, and you read about that a lot in these things. Okay, so, you know, why is that such a big issue? You know, they're, they're pushing this thing. It's crazy. And then for teenage guys, you have uh, Refuel down here, hot movies, music, and reads. You know, don't don't worry about telling them. You know, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Don't don't warn them about movies. All hot movies, you know, and music of course too. And you got the kid there with the uh, rock and roll guitar. Don't worry, warn them about that either. Don't warn them that the uh, rock and roll came from voodoo and Santeria, and the pagans were the ones that came up with it. But now what they'll do in these Bible zines, almost all of them do this. They will. Uh, put these calendars in what you know suggest what you should do look at there watch the passion of the Christ the Roman Catholic movie by Mel Gibson that presents the one-eyed Christ okay and they go down through here you go it's Mariah Carey's birthday so you pray for lost people that don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ by the way Jesus said he didn't pray for the world okay and, and what, what happens if a young man looks at that and he says, well, who's Mariah Carey? Well, he has to find out. See? Pretty wicked. And again, you know, you're not, it's not that you get the Bible and you conform to it. Oh, no. Now the Bible conforms to you. You know, a young man wouldn't be interested in this one. That's for young women. So you get this one. See? Pretty ridiculous. How about explore? Why is God so awesome? <laughs> yeah. And again, another calendar. Uh, you have uh, celebrate Black History Month. Research Malcolm X up here. Mm-hmm. Ah. Need better bookmarks here, I think. Here you have rock solid and the lightning bolt study the occult that's a symbol of the occult okay not a symbol of Jesus Christ or something else Jesus is the rock no no that's rock as in rock and roll you know, you, Harry Potter has the lightning bolt on his forehead and everything here you have a kid talking about rap he likes rap and his father doesn't. And they just say, well, you should obey your father and that's why you shouldn't listen to him. Respectfully ask if you could listen to Christian hip-hop. There's no such thing as Christian hip-hop. There's worldly compromise. Okay, Rap is not a style of music that Christians should listen to. I'm going to get into more on that in just a little bit. My grandpa says that money is the root of all evil. Is he exaggerating just a little? He's quoting just a part of 1 Timothy 6.10 from an older version of the Bible. So there they have, they'll turn kids against their grandparents who use a King James Version. Real nice, real classy. Okay, <clears throat> and finally, does the Bible say the future is going to be good or bad? Both. It's going to get a lot worse and then it's going to get better than anything you could imagine. There is going to be a time called the Tribulation when awful things will happen all over the world, especially to Christians. <laughs> uh, no, the Christians are called out before the tribulation, before the time of Jacob's trouble. This is actually not even scriptural. There is great tribulation, but the term the tribulation is not in there. It's the time of Jacob's trouble. It's for the Jews to be brought back in line. Okay, the Christians are taken out. The body of Christ is removed before the tribulation. Okay, but Jesus will return to reign on earth. <clears throat> then everybody will be judged before God, and those who faithfully follow Jesus will be rewarded with eternal life. Uh, again, a little more, more error there. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll look at this one. Oops. <clears throat> Becoming. And here you have, you know, another woman. How to dress like the world, how to look like the world, yeah. 
And again, a calendar. And you have uh, today is Katie Kirk's birthday. How about down here? It's Oprah Winfrey's birthday. Yay. The woman who hates Christians, Bible-believing Christians. She's a New Ager. Okay. And she hates Jesus Christ. She hates Christians. Pretty ridiculous. And again, you can see how many of these bookmarks I have in here. I can't cover it all in this video. I'll do it on our website, kingjamesvideoministries.com. Another one for uh, baby boomers. If you're into the motorcycle thing, you know, this, uh, this would appeal to you. <clears throat> and then, of course, for young single men, I guess, or young married men, uh, here you have success. Sex says success with the opposite sex, and it goes in here to the index. And you have a whole section on sex, a huge amount of things on sex. So now you can, and I'm sorry, but you can be turned on when you're reading your Bible. I'm sure that's of the Lord, yeah. How about the survival guide, air conditioning, bathroom remodeling, starting a fire, caulking windows, conserving energy, adding a deck, dishwashers, doors. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's something that you should find in the Bible. You know, that's, that's important. And, and by the way, let's say a, an unsaved lost man, which is this, this is supposed to be geared towards, I think. Um, let's say a lost man picks this stuff up. What do you think he's going to read? He's going to be looking through here on the discussions on sex and on how to caulk his windows. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and finally, my last Bible zine, and there are many, many of these. I only own a couple, buy most of them used. This one here, how about a Bible for gangsters? You know, what's the Bible say about a proud look? These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination to him. Proud look. Yeah. Don't, don't warn the kids, don't warn the youth about staying away from the, the streets, the gangs, you know, because it'll lead to death and, you know, fornication. Oh, no, don't warn them. Just, oh, yeah, you can go out into it. You can be a real Christian, you know. Uh-huh. <clears throat> but let's look at a, a rap here. This is unbelievable. I want you to see this thing quickly here. You have... Uh, John, or written by John W. Moore, a.k.a. also known as John the Baptist. I walk the block with the Glock tucked out. The Glock is a pistol. To show you the steel is real, calls the blocks buck wild. I try to do right because I got two strikes. But he stepped below, just struck out. So watch what you say to me. You could be deceased. If I release all this pain in me, murder ain't a thing to me. Please forgive me, Pastor. But them demons kept chasing me. Now, is that the kind of Bible that you want to give out to your uh, youth group? If you have a teenage son or daughter, you want them reading that? And you go through and it's, and it's all, you know, how to look like a thug, how to act like a thug, how to be violent. You, you tell people, they get in your face, you tell them off. That's what this whole thing's about. And they have rap after rap. And this one also comes with a free Christian rap CD. So let's listen to what this thing sounds like. I walk the block with the Glock tucked out. Show you the steel is real because the block's buck wow. I try to do right because I got two strikes, but he stepped loud. Just struck down. So watch what you say to me. You could be deceased if I release all this pain to me. Murder ain't a pain to me. Please forgive me, Pastor, but them demons kept chasing me. Please forgive me, Mama, but the streets still raising me. Paint the picture, bet your God's not proud of me. Living high quality, okay. keeping others in power. That's about enough of that. <laughs> uh... Unreal. I mean, that's all I can say. Uh, Jesus sure knew what he was talking about when, the, when he said that the time would come when they will not endorse sound doctrine and that uh, when he comes back, will he find faith left on the earth? Yeah, wonder about that myself sometimes. Last one I want to look at is the Green Bible. This is a new Bible which came out and it's printed on recycled paper and they're concerned about global warming. Let me show you this one. Okay, here we have the Green Bible. 
forward by Desmond Tutu. <laughs> yeah. And it starts out, and there's a lot of different people that write things uh, in here uh, with their environmentalist beliefs. And remember, these new versions are about bringing in the one world government of the Antichrist, the new world order. That's what they're for. Look at this. The ecological crisis reveals the urgent moral uh, need for a new solidarity, especially in relations between the developing nations and those that are highly industrialized. New solidarity. It's another word for new world order. All the nations need to start cooperating and coming together and forming a you know, new order. And look at this one. At the conclusion of this message, I should like to address directly my brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church. Uh, the Catholic Church, the people in there aren't my brothers and sisters. Sorry, but they're not. Over here, uh, it goes into a lot of things. There's a succession from local, national to global, local. There's the word again. You'll see these new agers using it time and time again. Global this, global that. Watch out for that. Okay? Um, but you'll see the whole thing here. I'm not going to read the whole deal. But I'm going to look up here in the, in the back, show you one of the verses of this perversion. What they do is they will put anything that has to deal with the earth, they'll put it in green, they'll highlight it in green. Here you have 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10 says, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. That's not what the Bible says. I'll show you what the real Bible says here. 2 Peter 3.10 in the King James Version says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up, not disclosed. So there you have the Green Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Bible, uh, recommended by the Roman Catholic Church, written, some of the foreword written by Catholics, Pretty much useless, uh, but I did find a good use for it. As you can see here in this picture, it's real handy to take out in the woods and uh, throw it on the ground and keep my saw out of the dirt. So. <laughs> okay, I think I have a little bit more room up here say, what's all this? Well, this is just part of my collection. Uh, for many, many years now, I've been going around to used bookstores and collecting these new Bible versions. And I've looked at them, I've read parts of them and everything. I don't waste a lot of time on them, but uh, the point is, I have studied. I have put time into this. I'm not some ignorant King James only advocate that's read one book and now I know everything. No. I put a lot of research into it, okay? And uh, I just want to ask you a question. Do you really think that this is all about clearing up difficult to understand words in the King James Version? Is that really what this is about? Or is this a satanic conspiracy to get rid of this book? You go into the average church today and you'll have people carrying a lot of this and you'll have somebody with this and you can't make them line up people say well it says basically the same thing no it does not the King James Version and these new versions do not say the same thing they come from different Greek texts they are these are Egyptian right here this whole pile is from Egypt this is from Antioch where they were called Christians first Acts chapter 11 verse 26 you can study this subject. I didn't really cover it a whole lot in detail, the Antioch versus Alexandria thing, but it's, it's documented, okay? And this is not going to stop either. 
until the Lord comes back at the end of the tribulation. You're just going to have a, I mean, it kind of reminds me of the Tower of Babel. So many different versions, and they all contradict each other. And, of course, they all really contradict the King James Version, which is what it's about. Remember what Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan said. There is a plan to get rid of the Bible. And the devil knows that he can't get rid of this book. He knows he can't destroy it. So how does he get rid of this book? That's how. By covering it up with all of this. Confusing the body of Christ into believing that there are better versions out there. So what's my advice to you? Study. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That only appears in the King James Bible, by the way. All of these have removed that. They don't tell you to study. I'm telling you to study. Don't take my word for this. Look this stuff up on your own. I've showed you some really wild stuff in this video, and I've documented it. But hey, you don't have to believe me. Go on out and do the research for yourself. Ask the Lord to show you the truth. Okay? The Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. But now, for those of you out there who claim to be King James only, let me just ask you a question. Are you really King James only? Are you a King James Bible believer? There's a big difference there. You see, I've gone to churches that advertise in the newspaper as being King James only. And you go in there, and you'll hear the preacher, and he'll be preaching from the King James Version, and all of a sudden he'll say, Actually, the Greek word here should be better translated as, and he'll give you a word, he'll give you readings from the Nestle's text. See? That's even more deceptive than using one of these new versions. You use God's book here, God's word in English, the King James Version. You use that, and then you correct it with the Nestle's text. That's deception. And see, it's also deception because that pastor stands up in the pulpit and he says, this book is God's word. God's word says, God's telling you today. And yet in his heart, he does not believe it's God's word. You see, if you believe that this book is God's word and you proclaim it as God's word, then it cannot have error because God cannot lie. How could God, how could Almighty God lie? And believe me, all these errors that you hear about in the King James Version, they have all been answered. I've never seen a real error. Not one. But most people, they hear it, oh, this is an error, and they just go, good, then I can get rid of the final authority. No, you can't. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Study. That's the key issue here. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can contact us here, kingjamesvideoministries.com. I'll try to answer whatever questions you have. Um, but until then, get a King James Bible, read it, believe it. When it will affect your witnessing different. When you, when you go out and you witness to people and you believe in the Bible that you're reading, uh, it will change the power of your witness. Okay, It will also change your life. Your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ will change when you begin to believe what you're reading. When you begin to actually say, these are the words of God to me as an English-speaking Christian. Okay, That's my advice. Thank you very much for watching.